Welcome to Story Scan. Today we will recap the 2008 movie, The Reader. Let's dive in. In the opening scene of the movie, set in 1995 Berlin, we find Michael Berg, Ralph Fiennes, impeccably dressed, preparing breakfast for Bridget, Jeanette Hain, a young brunette who spent the night with him. Their parting is marked by a certain awkwardness, and through the window, Michael watches a Berlin S-Bahn gracefully glide by, a fleeting moment that hints at the unfolding of their story. Transported back to early 1958 in Neustadt, West Germany, we witness a somber and disheartened teenage Michael, David Cross, stepping off a tram on a rainy winter day. Restless, he wanders the wet streets until finding refuge in the entryway of a nearby apartment building, where he falls ill and begins to vomit. It is at this vulnerable moment that Hannah Schmitz, Kate Winslet, the caring tram conductor, comes to his aid and helps him return home. Diagnosed with scarlet fever, Michael is confined to his house for the next three months. During this time of recovery, he finds solace in examining his stamp collection and passing the hours in anticipation of better days. As spring finally arrives, Michael summons the courage to visit the apartment building again, bearing a bouquet of flowers as a gesture of gratitude towards Hannah. Although she remains matter-of-fact in her response, she asks him to accompany her to work on the tram line. However, an unfortunate incident occurs when Michael is caught spying on her while she dresses, overwhelming him with shame, and he flees the scene. Upon his return to apologize a few days later, Hannah skillfully seduces Michael, drawing him deeper into her world. With a newfound intimacy, he persuades her to reveal her name, Hannah. From that moment on, Michael becomes entangled in a clandestine affair with her, willingly rejecting the advances of girls his own age. Their sordid liaison blossoms throughout the spring and into the summer, especially during his school vacation. Their rendezvous, always held at her apartment, take on an intellectual dimension, with Hannah urging Michael to read literary works he studies in school, such as The Odyssey, The Lady with the Dog, and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. In a poignant gesture of devotion, Michael sells his cherished stamp collection to finance a bicycling tour for both of them in the picturesque countryside. However, as Hannah's career advances with a promotion to a better-paying position and an office job within the tram company, a sense of restlessness begins to haunt her. During one of their secret trysts, when Michael attempts to read Chekhov's The Lady with the Dog to her, Hannah reacts unexpectedly and snaps at him. Their passionate connection takes a bittersweet turn, and they share one last intimate moment before she abruptly vanishes, leaving Michael heartbroken and bewildered as to her whereabouts. Fast forward to 1966, eight years later, and Michael is now a 23-year-old law student enrolled at Heidelberg Law School. As a part of a unique seminar led by Professor Roll, Bruno Ganz, a survivor of a concentration camp, Michael finds himself drawn into a riveting trial. The trial revolves around several women accused of being SS guards during the death marches from Auschwitz in 1944, allegedly allowing 300 Jewish women to perish in a tragic church fire. To Michael's utter shock and disbelief, one of the defendants on trial is none other than Hannah herself. Struggling to grapple with this unexpected revelation, he embarks on a personal journey to visit a former concentration camp in an attempt to come to terms with the haunting past and his connection to Hannah. The trial ignites a fierce division within the seminar, with one passionate student expressing anger and frustration, insisting that there's nothing more to glean from the proceedings except the undeniable existence of heinous acts. In a moment of fervor, the student goes as far as to assert that the older generation of Germans should bear responsibility for their perceived failure to prevent or halt the Holocaust. Central to the trial is the crucial testimony of Ilana Mather, Alexandra Maria Lara, a courageous young Jewish woman who has bravely penned a memoir chronicling her harrowing survival alongside her mother, Lena Olin. Her compelling account serves as a pivotal piece of evidence, shedding light on the unspeakable atrocities that took place during those dark times. During Hannah's testimony, in stark contrast to her co-defendants, she courageously confesses her full awareness of Auschwitz's horrifying reality as an extermination camp. Not only that, she openly acknowledges her active participation as an SS guard in a chilling practice. Along with her colleagues, she candidly admits to the dreadful process of randomly selecting 10 prisoners, whose lives would be tragically sacrificed to make room for incoming prisoners, preventing overcrowding within the camp. Regarding Hannah's specific actions, she cold-heartedly targeted the physically vulnerable and less able-bodied prisoners, condemning them to a tragic fate. In a twisted display of sadism, she would indulge in having prisoners read to her, choosing one female prisoner each evening to read a book in her office, deriving great pleasure from this cruel practice. Tragically, each prisoner who read to her eventually met their demise. 
Additionally, Hannah faced further charges during her time as an SS guard, including 300 counts of murder. These charges stemmed from a dreadful incident when an Allied Forces aerial bombing raid accidentally struck a church where prisoners were seeking refuge for the night. This horrifying event resulted in the death of numerous innocent lives, deepening the gravity of Hannah's actions. In the tragic incident at the church, the roof collapsed, and a devastating fire broke out, posing a grave threat to the imprisoned souls inside. Amidst the chaos, the prisoners desperately attempted to flee the blazing inferno, only to discover that all exits had been ruthlessly locked. As SS guards, including Hannah, possessed the authority to unlock these exits and grant the prisoners a chance at survival, they chose not to intervene. In the end, only two prisoners, Ilana Mather and her mother, managed to survive the horrific ordeal. When questioned about her involvement, Hannah vehemently denies any personal authorization to lock the church's exit doors, thus sealing the fate of those trapped inside. Despite facing pressure from her fellow defendants, she remained steadfast in her denial, further complicating the search for truth and accountability. As the trial unfolds, the prosecutor presents a document allegedly bearing Hannah's signature, which authorizes the tragic incident at the church. Hannah staunchly maintains her innocence, adamantly asserting that her signature was forged by someone else. However, the tide shifts when she is challenged to provide a handwritten sample of her signature for comparison. Faced with this compelling evidence, Hannah experiences a sudden change of heart, admitting to having indeed signed the document. In that tense courtroom moment, Michael is struck by a profound revelation about Hannah's hidden truth, she is illiterate. He discerns that she has taken extraordinary measures throughout her life to conceal this deeply personal secret. Even her decision to join the SS was driven by her fear of a job promotion that would expose her illiteracy to the world. This newfound understanding adds another layer of complexity to the enigmatic character of Hannah and sheds light on the reasons behind some of her life choices. In a private conversation with Roll, Michael discreetly reveals that he possesses information that could be advantageous to one of the defendants. However, he grapples with uncertainty as the defendant herself wishes to keep this information concealed. Roll responds by emphasizing the crucial lessons from history, implying that if they fail to learn from the past, the purpose of the seminar loses its significance. Following the trial's conclusion, Hannah is sentenced to life imprisonment for her involvement in the tragic church deaths, while the other defendants receive shorter prison terms. As time goes on, Michael successfully completes his legal studies, earning his degree, and gradually paves his way to becoming a thriving lawyer. Michael married a young woman named Martha, Caroline Herforth, and the couple joyfully welcomes a daughter, Julia, into their lives. However, despite his external commitment, Michael continues to harbor emotional withdrawal, struggling to fully connect with his family. Regrettably, their marriage ultimately falters, and a few years later, Martha decides to part ways, leaving Michael to grapple with further detachment from his daughter. The strain in their relationship becomes palpable as he finds himself growing distant from the very person he should hold closest to his heart. As Michael rediscovers the books and notes from his past affair with Hannah, a newfound connection is sparked within him. Moved by nostalgia and longing, he decides to re-establish contact with her in a unique way. He carefully reads passages from those cherished works into a tape recorder, pouring his emotions into each word. Taking a leap of faith, he sends these precious cassettes along with another tape recorder to Hannah, who remains imprisoned. In an unexpected turn of events, Hannah seizes this opportunity to embark on a journey of self-improvement. Utilizing the audio tapes as her guiding light, she teaches herself to read the very books that once brought them together, all from the confines of the prison library. Over time, the boundaries of the physical world dissolve as their connection deepens through the unspoken language of literature. Michael, though deeply touched by Hannah's transformation, chooses to maintain a certain distance. He refrains from writing back or visiting, yet he continuously expresses his sentiments through the unbroken stream of audio tapes. Each recording becomes a testament to the silent bond they share, spanning across the barriers of time and space. In the year 1988, the prison's warden reaches out to Michael, seeking his assistance in arranging for Hannah's release on parole as she approaches her impending freedom. Reluctantly, he consents to sponsor Hannah, feeling torn by conflicting emotions. Determined to help her reintegrate into society, he sets out to find her a suitable apartment and job. However, when the day finally arrives for their long-awaited reunion, Michael finds himself distant and aloof in Hannah's presence. Their shared history weighs heavily upon him, making it difficult to bridge the gap that time and circumstances have forged. Hannah, on the other hand, opens up about her inner turmoil, revealing that before the trial, she never truly confronted the gravity of her actions as an SS guard. Yet, now, her past haunts her every waking moment, serving as a constant reminder of the consequences of her choices. Tragically, 
after Michael's departure, Hannah reaches a devastating decision, ending her life by hanging herself in her prison cell. In her final moments, she leaves behind a poignant note addressed to Michael and a tea tin containing her life savings. Her last wish, as expressed in her will, is for Michael to use this sum to support the family of one of the prisoners at Auschwitz, seeking a form of redemption for her past actions. Later, Michael embarks on a journey to New York, where he encounters Ilana, who plays a dual role in his life. Overwhelmed by guilt and remorse, he confides in her about his intricate past relationship with Hannah. He reveals that Hannah had kept her illiteracy hidden throughout most of her life, but her farewell message urged him to give the cash, along with additional funds from her bank account and the tea tin, to Ilana. Through this profound act of atonement, Michael seeks to honor Hannah's memory and offer solace to those affected by the atrocities of the past. In a delicate twist of fate, he finds himself forging a new connection with Ilana, bound together by the intricate tapestry of their shared history with Hannah. Upon hearing Ilana's perspective that there might be nothing further to learn from the horrors of the concentration camps, Michael reflects on the best way to honor Hannah's wishes. Sensing the need for catharsis, he proposes that the money from Hannah's tea tin be donated to an organization dedicated to combating adult illiteracy, particularly one with ties to the Jewish community. Understanding the significance of this act, Ilana wholeheartedly agrees, knowing it will be a meaningful way to contribute to the healing of others. As they part ways, Ilana decides to keep the tea tin, as it holds a deeply personal connection to her own past. Reminiscent of a similar one she possessed before her time in the camps, it was taken from her, destined to be melted down as a grim symbol of her loss. Now, in a twist of fate, the tea tin becomes a treasured memento, representing resilience and survival. Fast forward to the present day of 1995, Michael experiences a heartfelt reunion with his daughter, Julia, who has returned from a transformative year in Paris. Acknowledging his short Shortcomings as a father, he takes her on a poignant journey to a church they had visited during the memorable bicycle tour he once shared with Hannah almost four decades ago. Standing by Hannah's resting place, Michael begins to recount the intricate and poignant story of his and Hannah's past, hoping to offer his daughter insight into a complex chapter of his life that forever shaped him.